Welcome to the Creative Play and Podcast Network. Join us as we share our favorite RPGs, one-shot games, tabletop games, reviews of items, and convention panels, and other exciting things that we run into from time to time. Sit back and enjoy the show. Hi, this is Kelly, a.k.a. Trixie from Ragnarok and Roll, a sign to Ragnarok story, and Tilda Wimblewick from D&D Journey of the Fifth Edition. First off, I would just like to say thank you to everyone for listening to our varied adventures, as well as for rating us on iTunes and RPGpodcast.com. If you haven't rated us yet, we would greatly appreciate it if you could. And if you're looking for more ways to support our efforts, we are now on Patreon, a great site where you can help us continue making more podcasts, as well as some special surprises for our patrons. If you can, please look us up at www.patreon.com slash cppn. Every little bit helps. And again, thank you for listening. Uh, welcome to Creative Play and Podcast Network. It is International Ladies' Day, March 8th. It's been a day since like 1972, and we're here to tell you, gamer girls are the shiznet. <laughs> or gamer ladies. Gamer ladies, Because yeah. it is International Women's Day. Gang, gang, gamer girls were unbelievable. And uh, what is your name? My, oh, <laughs> my name is Kelly. <laughs> Hi, Kelly. I'm Jocelyn, and uh, we're both avid gamers. Mm-hmm. Um you probably heard our voices on the other uh, episodes. We do the Journey of the Fifth Edition and the Lady Knights of Adventure. Yeah, I also do Dark Vision Dames. Although our voices probably sound a little different because we just got back from Wild Wild West Con. Yeah, where we uh, put on our <laughs> cosplay and go pretty hard for four days mm-hmm. of costuming and steampunk. We both present panels. Um, my partner and I do a a lot of events. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it's, it's... That's an understatement. It's awesome to be here with you. Um, to be in a game store, store that really... A game store that really welcomes women gamers. I never mm-hmm. feel unwelcome here, mm-hmm. um, which is not always the case. No, some other stores can, or, you know, just give you the... Uh, what I like to call the creep vibe, or they're just not welcoming to ladies. Right? You have to constantly mm-hmm. be proving to people that you know what you're doing, that you have real cred, the number of hoops you have to jump through as a lady gamer um, compared to what gentlemen gamers may have to go through is sometimes yeah. really absurd. That's true. That That's actually a very good point, because uh, even if you know how to play, you're kind of stigmatized uh, for certain uh, groups. Yeah. But no, we don't really run into that as much. Not um, here. Not here. And our game master is always, like, runs a lot of games just for ladies. He's yeah. also very proactive about including women in his games, which is really nice. Yeah, he runs, like, two lady, yeah. um, almost all lady groups. Yeah. Um, so that's very nice, and uh, um, and I'm not just biased because he's my husband. Um, he knows how to make us and even even new lady gamers because we have a lot of new lady gamers, people who wanted to learn but they were always afraid, you know, um, they or were unwelcome. unsure. Yeah, well, and they're, they're, well, that's what they're afraid of. They're afraid of being ridiculed or unwelcome or that type of thing. And Jim goes out of his way to make sure that that's not the case. Yeah, it is a real challenge as a lady gamer to um, find a game group in which you're treated just like a gamer, mm-hmm. and um, but with respect too, um, and that there is a welcome mat laid out for newcomers regardless of gender so that it's not that experience of coming to a group and going, hey, I'm a woman, I've always wanted a game, never been welcome, and they're like, well, too bad, so sad. We still don't want you. So we never have that problem with this group. Yeah, and new people, I mean, it's always hard for a new person wanting to learn a game, but it is an extra element of wariness for a woman because yeah. of those things. Absolutely. So, although, and in general, I think that a number of the 
the places around Tucson are becoming more yeah friendly I mean uh, um, our home store is very welcoming um, I think stores that are less welcoming are finding that they have less uh, less of a place in um, a more modern gaming setting mm-hmm. and I'm sorry lady gamers like accessories oh <laughs> It, I do. I love my. I like. I love dice. Lots of dice. Lots of colors. Yeah. Lots of you know. So, be kind of foolish to disregard more than half the populace. Yeah. You know, in that regard, we we definitely want to buy our games. We want to buy our dice, our dice bags. Mm-hmm. We want our minis and everything else. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're going to spend just as many dollars in the game store as a uh, gentleman gamer. But we're not if we don't feel welcome. That's true. Yeah. And, you know, I remember my first gaming store that I ever went into about 20 years ago. And um, I loved really hardcore strategy games. And I'd been in chess club and I played Go. And so that was my experience coming in. And I walked into this game store and I mean, it went completely dead silent. Everyone stopped talking, and every person in the store stared at me. It was like walking through a gauntlet just to get up to the cash register mm-hmm. and even ask a question. It's probably really good that I have had more harrowing experiences as a performing artist because <laughs> I was like, fine, fine, stare at me. I'm still here to buy my dice and figure out this whole tabletop gaming thing. So, yeah. And, you know, and it's not just guys, too, that, you know, like, have you ever been to that gaming store where you walk in and there's already one girl there? Just one. Yeah. And she's like token female. But she's giving you more daggers because, wait a minute, no, no, it's my little domain. I don't want another female in my territory. Yeah. I mean, I'm like, what? That's that's (laughs) always really frustrating because, you know, I feel like we have an opportunity to help build each other up Mm -hmm. and to roll out the welcome mat to new gamers. And especially on International Women's Day, I think a lot about how we as women can not only pave the way for future gamers, but... The women before who have, you know, made a space for us to come and participate in gaming and who have faced down those game stores where you walk in and everybody stares at you and no one talks to you and uh, where you don't have any friends. Or here, you can play the token magic user. Oh, yeah. Here, you should be a cleric and heal us because you're not going to be able to manage the strategy of a sorcerer or, you know, to tank like a paladin. Yeah. But yeah, no, thanks to all those ladies who who paved the way for us. And, and I also like to think in turn that we've paved the way for a lot of the younger ladies. Absolutely. Um, to, uh, geek culture has really come into its own. Geek is chic. And we were a part of bringing that to the forefront, which is nice. And thank you to those ladies who helped us yeah the, you know or yeah. the guys who were at least willing to give us a shot when we were young yeah which was when these started right when this all was very beginning yeah. you know no. guys that would be willing instead of just automatically shutting us out so yeah yeah then those guys were you know really great allies mm-hmm. um i know i'm really appreciative and grateful to my guy friends who made a space for me at the gaming table and made me feel welcome um, it took the time to treat us as a person and teach us right whereas just like places. any other n- newcomer exactly you can't come to a game and immediately know how to play a game to prove that you're worthy of playing the game yeah. that's a really like terrible conundrum to yes be in. exactly <laughs> so um i'm really grateful for all of all of those allies and for the other women who paved the way and I do love going to geek conventions and gaming conventions now and seeing more and more young women who are, you know, playing tabletop games, involved in RPGs, who, you know, maybe are playing online games too. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a I'm an avid online gamer as well as a tabletop and RPG ga- gamer. So I love that there are more women in all of those communities. Yeah. Likewise, and I'm also loving like you back when the MMORPGs and first stuff first started. It's like where they would always have 
oh, what what's, you know, are you male? Everything like, you know, that age, you know, sex checks, you know. I'm like, nobody asks anymore. No. Doesn't, I mean, which is awesome. It's like, why does that matter? <laughs> I remember when I first started playing online um, MMORPGs and... Um, I was really new to doing that, and I just, of course, I would get on voice chat, and I'd be myself, and people would know I was a woman, and I just weathered the experience, which was not always positive, Mm -hmm. Um, but I knew a lot of women who would come to me later privately and say, I refuse to speak on voice chat. I don't want them to know I'm a woman. Mm -hmm. They'll treat me like they just treated you. They'll treat me differently. And it was true. Like, I got a lot of harassment in the early days, and some of it was really bad. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, I know a lot of the early girl gamers would sometimes make guy characters just to avoid that. And also avoid the voice chats. Yeah, the voice chats. and, and I avoided voice chat because I'm technologically inept half the time. <laughs> and I don't console game. I'm- so I love voice chat because I love PvP. And uh, you need it to uh, yell at the noobs and direct your armies. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm more of a PvE kind of gal. <laughs> I'm like, don't yell at me! <laughs> So, but it it, uh, it did mean that I got a lot of inappropriate private messages, as well as just like some oh, terrible yeah. the moments. Whispers. The whispers, and I, I was just thinking about it, this one really horrible time in one game that was still shocking to me that it happened. But you know, like those were the early days, and it has improved a lot. So it's, it's not dramatically improved. Um, I don't do the voice unless I'm with actual IRL friends. Mm. I don't do those uh, typically. Um, But you never get those inappropriate, so are you really a woman? Does it matter? Yeah. Yeah. Um, That has, like, dropped off by far. Of course, I don't play some of these first-person shooters um, where, you know... Where some of the age does tend to be a little uh, lower. Yeah, a lot of the griefing I got was often from like 13 and 15 year olds, which was really strange to me at the time because I was a grown up person. (laughs) Yeah. What are you doing talking to any uh, woman this way? But I'm old enough to be like your big sister, your aunt or whatever. Like, why are you even allowed unchaperoned online. Yeah, exactly. Does your mother know you're saying these things? Can you give me your phone number? I'd really like to tell her what you just said to me. Um, so I I am really happy to see those improvements. And also just more visibility of female gamers has been really great. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, King of the Nerds, the, what, the, sec- the first two uh, winners were females. One was a professional gamer. That's awesome. Get I on miss her. that show. I really do. It's so cool. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, so I think one of the nice things about gaming, we've talked a lot about the harassment, which is hard to get away with, from as a female gamer. It's just like a reality of the experience. And I'm super happy it's improved, but I had to weather a lot of nastiness when I was in my 20s. And so, but that said, like, Gaming has provided a lot of really empowering opportunities to go yeah. out on the imaginary field and be the leader of armies or to be a tank or to prove my mettle with strategy. Um, all of those things. It's a lot more fun than chess, by the way. Oh, yeah. No, I was the only girl on the chess team. Uh, yeah, that was not fun. Although, I did get to be one of uh, the first uh, all-female chess tournaments. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. I was a pretty mediocre chess player, but I liked the opportunity. As was I. But and uh, I was tenacious, so that was fun. I got to, got to compete in that. And I didn't awesome. do very well, but I was there. That's so cool. So it was really kind of cool. Well, what's your favorite uh, gaming experience as a woman, maybe emblematic of women in gaming? Um, well, let's see. 
Um, I, you know, I will have to actually say our last, um, the Rag sign, the Ragn Rock and Roll, um, where I played uh, Trixie Lockhart, a scion of Loki. I really got to take that character through a complete metamorphosis, so to speak, where as a woman, you know, sometimes you start off as one thing, but then through tragedy and through, you know, you become a different person. And this character really has progressed to the point. Poor thing, she's broken. <laughs> <laughs> may, she, may she have time to recover. Yes, but, you know, she's strong. And she's going to. That's awesome. Um, if I ever get to play her again, you know. Awesome. And But it was really, I think, rewarding to play her. And she used whatever she wants. She doesn't apologize to anyone of who she is and how she um, is like, there's no shame. She has no, so she does not let others dictate. Mm -hmm. She's confident in who she is. Not so much now, because she's got to get back to that point where right. she's Still. she's a little bruised right now, emotionally and spiritually. From betrayal, most foul. <laughs> um, <laughs> by the men in her life. But oh. uh, um, she's, you know, she's strong, and she's going to come back from it. She's, awesome. you know, and it's going to give her a her sense. <laughs> One of my favorite moments as a female gamer, it was really spoke to how gaming can bring women together and how we can lift each other up. Um, I was playing Warhammer Online. For those who remember that game, it was buggy at, at AF. Buggy. Are, are we allowed to this say? This is. Buggy. It was buggy as fuck. That was like some piece of shit coding sometimes. But my goodness, it was amazing. It was really intensive. It was a lot of strategy. And there were just like some women scattered throughout this community of hardcore PVPers. And we'd come together like once a week and we'd run an all women's war band. We would sweep the field. And it was very satisfying um, to run those. And, you know, we kind of traded off. Some of us loved the strategy of organizing an actual like, you know, war band and, um, some of us just wanted to like run some small instances and kick some ass. And as we used to say, we wanted to fuck start some people in the face, which is <laughs> a real PvP or way to be. So <laughs> that was very satisfying. Yeah, not a PvP thing. Yeah. I sent to freeze. I'm one of those like, ah! I just stabbed people in the face. It worked really well for yeah. me in PvP. There you go. So, um, so, I don't know. I mean, like, it's it's fun to think about women's place in gaming. It's great to see how we've progressed, and I can't wait to see how it goes in the future. Uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, we're, we're, you know, as long as we continue towards equality. Yeah. We're not there yet. No, but, but. There, there are more and more women gamers, mm -hmm. more and women, more women designers, mm -hmm. and... Um, more and more women who are buying the games mm -hmm. and teaching their kids to game. So yeah. it's pretty awesome. Yep. Great. All Yay. right. Happy International Women's Day. Woohoo! Woo! Thank you for listening to the Creative Play and Podcast Network. And feel free to enjoy our other shows, such as D&D &D Journey of the Fifth Edition and Scion Ragnarok and Roll, a Scion hero to Ragnarok story. Thank you for listening.